What you're about to watch is my conversation with the salesman from the BEFCO booth at the National Farm Machinery Show. BEFCO stands for the best equipment farmers can own. They've been in business a long time. Almost all these products you see here are American made. I originally started looking at this company because of their flail mowers. And what I'm finding out is they actually make a wide range of products and looks like it's all well-built equipment. So let's jump into the conversation I have with the sales rep and learn a little bit about these products. Yeah. I was going to ask you about this sickle bar mower. Your have you really? Yeah. Come here, Zayden. I've seen you in Tractor Time with Tim and Laura Farms. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. I watch pretty steady. So you, are you a tractor guy yourself, or like traditional farming or just like compacts or? So I come from an, an agricultural community in Eastern North Carolina. Uh, and so Bethco has been in that, in that area for about 40 years. So all of this equipment that you see, we actually build. Uh, yeah. So we are the manufacturer and we typically sell to dealers and then the end user buys from the dealer. However, in this scenario, uh, you are allowed to purchase from us. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions I'd, you have about the equipment? It seemed like I read your, on your website like there was a unique story about the company. Uh, have you been around a long time, or or what's the yeah, Bevco stand for? Uh, it's the best equipment farmers can own. That's that's what it was that I remembered about the name. And so a long time ago, uh, before before the days of all the other implement manufacturers, uh, there were two implement manufacturers. There was Bevco, and there was Woods. Before any other company came from overseas, before any other company did any of that. And so we've continued that tradition for 40 years. And so when you look at our equipment, it's American made. I mean, it's we build it in North Carolina. And I'll give you an example. You see that grade scraper right there? Yep. It's a 72 inch grade scraper. Now, when you look at a grade scraper, they, they at, at the surface, they all look pretty similar, right? Kind of the same design, same setup. But that one right there weighs 750 pounds. So if you want to buy one and it lasts, that's, that's the one to buy. And so we've kind of tried to keep that throughout our line. We use heavier duty steel gauges. We use uh, better spiral gear boxes instead of straight gears. Uh, so that 20 years from now, a customer can come up to this show and go, I bought that mower 20 years ago and never had a problem with it. That's fantastic. And it's, it's worked out for us. So I've got a couple things on my wish list. I've got a box blade and I want a land plane and I also want a rear blade. But uh, two things that really caught my eye just now yeah. is this sickle bar mower and then this over here that looks kind of like a replacement for a bat wing mower. Right. And so look, first on this, how big of a tractor do you need to run this? All right, sickle bar mower. So what he's showing me right now are all the specs for their sickle bar mowers. And any of the sizes can run on a tractor as small as 20 PTO horsepower. The actual use for this product is for cutting hay as the first step of baling. But my interest in this type of a mower is something that can mow around a pond bank at different angles or possibly under a fence line. And this may not be the perfect product for that, but it's it's kind of what drew my eye. Now, this looks, to, when I just look at this, being uh, ignorant of it, it looks like three finish mowers, but the thing that I think of is like a replacement for a bat wing. Is that what, what we've got, or? No, it's actually three three finish mowers. So it's like so for grooming large. For grooming. Yeah, and we actually, uh, there was a gentleman who worked for Bethco many years ago, who designed and developed that. So anywhere that you see it in the world, he's the one that designed it many, many years ago. Uh, I've above, seen I've seen like the uh, enclosed mowers that have three units on it like that. Usually they're not exactly like that, but this can be put on anything with a PTO. Well, it's gotta have the horsepower, but. Right, it's gotta, it's gotta be able to pull it. I think that unit weighs around 3,000 pounds. So it's a, it's a pretty heavy unit, but um, that is, you know, our, we have two of those, believe it or not. We make one called the Flex, and we make another one called the Super Flex. And that is the Super Flex, so it has a beefier frame, larger tires, 
um, a bit more utility, utilitarian. Is your typical customer a guy who just maintains a lot of his own acreage, or is that someone who's working commercially and maintaining? So there are three different customers for that unit. Uh, the first customer is a municipality, a city, a county, uh, a, a large entity uh, who would require that mower. Perhaps they had ball fields or they had uh, high school football fields, things of that nature where they needed a really nice finish, <clears throat> but they needed to do it in a timely manner. There's also uh, commercial applications for cutting large stands of pasture and grass with that machine. The last person is a more unique person, and that is a private owner who has a large acreage that they own. And they spend a better part of their, their week maintaining that acreage. So for them, time was very important. It was, that, that signified getting their, their actual life back, being able to do more than cut grass and maintain acreage. I think there comes a point where it, it, you know, life's a lot of trade-offs in the end. And, and those guys saw it and they were like, yeah, we're, we're done doing this. We're done doing this over and over again. No matter what you do, there's a dollar figure attached to your time. Absolutely. So. And so, so that's, those are the three buyers for, for that particular unit. Um, the grade scraper. Okay, let's look at it. With the grade scraper. Uh, like I said, a lot of companies make these, uh, but we, we feel like this is the best iteration of it. Uh, and, and we've been around long enough to know. So this one weighs 750 pounds. The average 72 inch grade scraper weighs somewhere around 600 pounds. So more weight. <clears throat> uh, this is high carbon steel in the blades. We've also put adjustable skids. I mean, adjustable blades and adjustable skids. So you can remove this once the skid starts to wear out, flip it, and keep going. And you'll see different designs where they try to achieve this by halving this and bolting it. it just does it's not a very efficient design, it fails. So we put the thin iron in there and the thin steel. Yeah, it looks well built for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Just being able to replace that small section instead of having to replace half the side much more efficient financially but um, it's built so heavy it's usually a non-issue uh, with these uh, this thing is so heavy you typically don't have to run those but if you do have an area that has what I would call segregated stone so you have large stone that's impacted most people would call it like a pothole you have large stone that's impacted and all the fines are out of it but it's hard uh, you would drop these down tear that whole area up lift them back up and begin your grading process. Yeah, that's kind of what I've learned. If you don't break the bottom of the pothole, it's a couple weeks, you're gonna be back where you were. Yeah, if you keep putting it in and putting it in and putting it in, it's, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna keep compacting down in there. So you've got the sickle bar mower and you've got hay rakes. Do you have, do you make balers? Uh, we do not. No. Um, we do make overseeders and seeders uh, and we make flail mowers and we make tillers and we make deck mowers. That's what brought me to your site is the flail mower. There's yeah, not, there, as, not as many companies that make flail mowers as, as a lot of the other stuff. Uh, um, what, what we've got going here is, for a long time in this industry, there was the rotary cutter, which gave you a rough cut. And there was the finish mower, which gave you a more manicured look. And then the flail mower came along. Uh, and it was kind of the best of both worlds because you could change the blades out and you could use hammer blades to knock down the big stuff. You could use the fine cut blades to get that finished look. And then they even went as far as to start to make dethatching blades to pull the dead grass out if you had a really good stand of grass. Obviously, you wouldn't want to run it too deep because it would tear the whole yard up. But, right. But yeah, it will dethatch the grass. So. Um, very new technology, very powerful. Um, so on, pretty well received. On uh, like my 38 horsepower tractor, I'd probably be running something like this or this if I want a hammer blade, and that's going to cut like an inch and a half material. Or it would de it would depend on the material, and it would depend on the uh, the unit as far as well what you wanted to use it for. Yes, you would not want to cut anything. Now remember, even with even with a rotary cutter, which is what you're saying, brush hog. Yeah. Uh, even with a rotary cutter, 
there are limitations to what it can cut. Um, so there is standard duty, heavy duty, but still it's not going to go much over two and a half inches. It's just not made for that. Even if you're backing into it and chopping it down and trying to be as careful as you can, it's just not really made for doing that. Yep. And get a shot under that here. That doesn't mean people don't use it in that manner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they yeah. use it all the time like that. I abuse the heck out of my, my uh, rotary cutter, and you just take that liability on yourself if you break it. Yeah, here, yeah. Let, me, let me get you one of these. So in this scenario, people use this machine so many different ways. Uh, it's actually an overseeder. Uh, but people use it to do all kinds of stuff. They use it, they'll, they'll, they'll plant row crops with it, block out these, and get it where the drill can't get, the ground's too soft. They'll, they'll do food plots, they'll do um, overseeding yards, they'll do all kinds of stuff. But the way this thing works, is this, is this is your seed bin. Out there out front, it's a PTO drill. Okay. And it's got straight ropes, it's got straight blades out front. And so what it does, if you're looking behind the tractor, it's cut in a straight line. And then it's dropping the seed, and then the packer's covering it up. So bing, bang, boom. But um, we actually make this machine uh, and they use it on golf courses that they want to get back on very quickly. And we put what are called razor straight blades, razor blades. And you, if you stand sideways, you can't even tell we've cut the ground with it. I mean, it's a very nice machine. Um, but if you're behind it, you can see that it's cut those lines. This is the PTO driven version. This is the ground driven version. Here, the ground needs to already be ready in order to utilize it, whereas this is going to get the ground ready, it's going to drop the seed in, and it's going to cover that. So this is going to be a much more affordable unit. Yes, sir, it is. As long as you, as long as you have a tiller. Hey! 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 As long as you've got a way to break the as dirt first. Have, yeah, as long as you have a tiller, which means that this is probably the better, the better so, machine. Gotcha. They're having a hard time. There's Hold a lot going on in here. So this is kind of fun. Power is out. You see it coming back on down there a little bit. Here it comes. If you haven't already, check out Befco. Looks like really high quality product.